How's it going, everybody? Um, it's currently the morning of the expansion. It was about uh, five hours. Uh, more than that, I'm on West Coast time. Actually, it's 5.30 right now. Six, six and a half hours until the expansion releases. So uh, let's let's bust out these neutral cards. I'm, I'm excited. I want to get into a lot of these cards. Well, they're, they're actually pretty interesting. The set of neutral commons in this set is pretty powerful, actually. Maybe more powerful than seen in a long time. So let's, let's get into it. And here's the big one. It's Bone Mare, 7 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Battlecrack of a friendly minion, plus 4, plus 4, and taunt. Um, this card is just so much. It's so many stats on one card. If you stick a minion on 6, and then you play this guy on 7, you take the board, like, every situation. It's, it's almost a neutral Firelands portal, in the sense that you're getting a really strong effect, which is the plus 4, plus 4, and taunt, and on top of the, on top of the taunt, you get the body. Like, you compare this to, like, Firelands Portal, but instead of dealing 5 damage, you get a Blessing of Kings. And it's neutral. <laughs> like, that seems kind of crazy, right? Because, you know, you, decks that always, almost always have minions on board, something like Token Shaman. I don't know if this is playing Token Shaman, but in, like, mid range Shaman decks that are going to be hitting the button a lot, they're going to have Totems on board, and they always threaten to leave. They always threaten to have Bone Mare value. I think this card is more than standard playable. I, this card is pretty good, I think, in Constructed. Their decks like Paladin, their decks like Shaman again, maybe even Druid with all the new token generations, like a new Death Knight and stuff, where you're gonna have dudes on board for this to just be insane. And if you play this on curve with a dude, it's insane. Like, <laughs> it's not even just good at, as a 7-drop, it's inherently bad against aggro, but it's a defensive 7 drop in the sense that if, you ha if they're going over the top of you, you can give a minion taunt. And if it's a big enough dude, like you kind of just win the game on this buff because you're buffing a huge taunt on you. Um, yeah, I think this card is good enough to see play in a variety of decks. I don't know if it sees playing Paladin over Spike and Steed. But I think you play this in like maybe slower Shaman decks. Uh, I think you play this in some sort of like mid range or Druid deck. Maybe you can play it in like more Tempo Warrior. There's a lot of scenarios. This is. Oh, this is a card that's so just has so many raw stats. You want it in any deck that can take advantage of the effect well enough. Uh, I'm gonna give this card a three and a half. I think this card's super strong. Uh, in arena, this card's ridiculous. I mean, this is probably the best neutral common in the set. I would say in arena, because again, it has so many stats. This is pretty comparable like bog creeper, because it's a big taunt. It's, I think it's better than bog creeper, honestly. Uh, it's a big taunt. And you also get a 5-5 five, five body. Like, it's, just, it's, it's pretty crazy. I'm going to give this a 4.5 in Arena. This is like a meta-defining Arena card. Like, when people look back on the Frozen Throne Arena meta, I think they're going to look back at Bone Mare ruining games. Like, that's how good I think this card is in Arena. Um, Alright, moving on to Snow Flipper Penguin. Zero mana, 1-1 one, one beast. Uh, it has no text. Good art. Um, yeah, this card's a joke, obviously. I mean, like, this doesn't see any play. You don't want this. And constructed. Uh, in arena, it's not good at all. I I guess you're not super unhappy playing it. Like Wisp is bad in arena, but it's like mediocre in rogue. So it's, it's okay in arena. Maybe it's it's really bad. It's not like unplayable in arena though. Like this card's a meme. Um, yeah, not really a whole lot to say. All right, Cobalt Skill Vein. Five mana, five five dragon. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus three attack. Okay, uh, this is another like body in arena the, the, it's a card that just looks like an arena body card but i think it actually could have constructed applications just because classes other than priest right now are pretty low on dragon synergy actually and like class specific dragon activators and if you're just playing like a mid-range or like tempo dragon deck this card actually seems pretty good in it like it's you know it has five mana five five which is basically vanilla stats for a five drop on top of that, having this ability, it's a guaranteed ability from the minion on board since it's an end of turn effect. So if you're playing, like, okay, the deck I was thinking about brewing here was hand buff Dragon Paladin, which I know sounds awful, and I'm sure it's awful, but like, I think that's the first deck that I make. The expansion is dra Dragon Hand Buff Paladin with this guy. Like, you know, the Karazhan Dragon card that gets 2 3 and 2 1 1s that nobody plays anymore. And, like, the new hand buff synergy cards with, like, the Lifesteal Charger and maybe the Serenite Chain Gang. Yeah, you know, it's it's gonna be terrible, but I'm excited to play it. Uh, I think other than this, uh, if you're playing in like any dragon deck that wants to be on board, and it's not like it's still like control dragon deck, like I I would classify Dragon Breast as like more of a tempo dragon deck. Um, I do that kind of in the same vein. I I don't think it gets played in Dragon Priest because it's competing with Dragon Operative, 
but any deck that wants to have like be like that tempo dragon deck, I think you might play this guy. This guy's considerable now. Like I don't think he's necessarily good, but he's at least considerable, so I'm gonna give him a two out of five. Um and Arena's card seems really good too. Uh again, just vanilla stats with a pretty relevant ability on top of it. Let's you trade better. You know, if you're ahead on board already, it lets you hit for more damage. I think it's a three I think it's a three and a half in arena. This is a pretty good pick in arena. I I, I want this in effect in a lot of my decks. Okay, Necrotic Geist. Six mana, five, three. Whenever one of your other minions dies, so I'm going to two, two, cool. Okay, so it's kind of like, while this is on board, your minions have Soul of the Forest. Um, so the problem with this card is, the decks that really can take advantage of this effect are like Token Shaman and Token Druid, but they're not really in the market for a six mana, five, three. And if you can't get value out of the turn it comes into play, it's just going to die because it's a five, three. It's a, you can't... Um, you have to be playing this card onto a board of like one ones or totems that can be that are worse than two twos and by killing them off you they turn into two twos right um this card the other problem with this card is once the geist gets removed the the minions aren't the, the it's it's a very temporary effect, right? Like, it's a lot I think it's a lot worse than Soul of the Forest. It's definitely doesn't get played in Token Druid, because if you want this effect, you just play Soul of the Forest. Uh, in Token Shaman, it's kind of interesting, but I, it's just way too slow. And uh, Yeah, also, if you're, like, on board and you can get value from the 2 twos, you have to be trading to get value from this card, and you might want to just be going for ace instead. So you're kind of potentially making unfavorable trades to get value out of this. Uh, overall, I, it's kind of interesting, but pretty bad. Uh, I'm going to give this a 1 constructed. Um... I could say this, I'll give it a one and a half. Again, like, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty, the, the, I don't, what's that, I don't, what, I don't, I have no vocabulary, okay? I don't like giving cards one, one ends. Like, st st uh, I can't talk, I'm sorry. I apologize for this. Um, I can't give cards just, like, straight ones, unless they're, like, very clearly, like, meme cards. Just because so many cards have, like, potential and like a very niche deck, and if they have it has potential in a deck that can be built and win a game in rank twenty, then I will I'll give it a one and a half. I, I think this is kind of fits that bill. All right, Sunborn Valkyrie, five mana five four. Valkyrie give adjacent minions plus two health. All right, so this is for the most part arena filler. It kind of suffers the same problems as the Necrotic Coast. If you're playing it in the kind of you want to be playing it in the kind of deck that has dudes on board already, and that kind of deck just didn't really want five mana five fours, right? Like. And you could say maybe, like, Paladin fits this card, but there's better things you can be doing as Paladin on turn 5, I feel like. Um, yeah, overall, this just doesn't, not quite powerful. If you get the battle cry off on too many, it's just not good enough, I think. Uh, I don't think it's a 1. It's the kind of, oh, I'm talking about Karakos and Arena. Okay. This is the kind of card where, like, it's just, no matter how good it, it has such a low ceiling, like, even if you get the best effect out of it, the 5 mana 5 8, which is ultimately just like not good enough constructed, I feel like. Um, Necrotic Geist and Arena. Uh, kind of interesting card. Ultimately, though, you're not going to have enough scenarios where you're trading off smaller minions to make them into 2 2s to really upgrade your board. So it's really more of like a defensive tool, I guess, to like kind of protect your board. So you play this and then make trades. And even though you're downgrading your minions, you're still just keeping things on board. Um, uh, it's playable in Arena. I, I don't think it's great. Just 6 mana 5 3 is just such a bad stat line. It has the potential to sit in your hand and do nothing. So uh, I'll give it a 2. I think it's playable. Alright, Sunborn Valkyrie in Arena seems really good. Uh, again, just like almost vanilla stats with an additional, like, pretty relevant effect. It, it's probably pretty good. I'll give it a 3. Okay, Death Speaker. 3 mana 2 4. Battlecrag of a friendly minion immune this turn. Okay. So you look at. Immune is a pretty powerful effect. <laughs> like, it can't die. It's immune to things. Um, I think this card is pretty similar to the Argent Protector, the 2 mana 2 2 Paladin card that gives a minion Divine Shield, which is like fringe constructive playable. And this card being neutral, I have to imagine this sees play somewhere, honestly. Like, I think this just. It's an almost vanilla. Again, it's an almost vanilla body with a relevant ability, just a minion to minion combat. I'm inclined to believe this will sneak in somewhere. I, I can't say where, really. But, like, there'll be, like, some sort of zoo or tempo deck that just wants this effect. It wants to, you know, make favorable trades while also developing their board. Like, that's what those decks are in the market to do. Maybe this is a two. I think it definitely has potential. Um, 
And the Rangers card seems really good too. Like the Archer Protector is a really great, like a great arena card. Um, I think this is maybe even better actually. Um, nah, it, it's probably a little worse because if you don't take advantage of the immune, it just it doesn't stick. So it's only for this turn. Um, but this card's really solid in the arena. I think it's a three and a half. Uh, Fallen Sun Cleric, 2 mana, 2 1. Battlecraft in front of minion plus 1 plus 1. Alright, so this is Smaller Shattered Sun Cleric. Uh, I don't. This card's a little bit better than Shattered Sun Cleric. You could say it's a 2 mana, 3 2 with like a small amount of. Like, you could have fast stats if you have a 1 drop and then play this into the 1 drop. Um, ultimately, the only deck that maybe wants this effect because it's too variable and it's not just doesn't have this power level to get played in like token shaman or or aggro druid um the only thing that i can think of that maybe wants this card is zoo this doesn't seem good enough for zoo right like there's so many things you'd rather be doing on turn two um are there i don't know maybe not it's playing like the discard version of old like darsha barbarian um do you want to double one drops is better than this but like yeah, ultimately, you could say this card is potentially playable just because if you play this into a one drop, it's really good. It's not really, it's okay. If you don't play it in one drop, it's obviously awful. So you have to play it on curve into a one drop for it to be even playable. Yeah, I don't think this card sees play, it just doesn't have enough power. Give it a one and a half. Alright. Uh, an arena card seems solid just because Shattered Sun Cleric is an okay arena card. But it is a little bit better just because they, you get the effect for cheaper and you still get like a similarly stabbed body for its cost. Uh, I'm gonna give this a three in arena. I, th I think this is definitely a card you won't be unhappy playing. All right, this is should not be here. This is a rare. Um, Dead Skill Knight is a one mana one one Merlock with Ice Steel. I would not rule this card out. Uh, you curve this guy into like a rock bull hunter. It's really good against aggro. Um, if you're playing like a Merlock deck, they're just in the market for defensive one drops. Which I don't think Murloc has any of, really. I This card could just see play as a defensive one drop. Like, if you buff it, it's really good. Lifesteal, like, it would be the only source of life gain in those decks, which is pretty good against aggro, it's pretty good against mage. Um, I don't think this gets played in Murloc Paladin just because it doesn't have enough synergy with the deck, but I think, like, in, okay, call me crazy, like, Quest Shaman, maybe you play this guy, just, like, as kind of a techie Murloc. Like, it's a good tech against aggro. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty low power card on its own, but if you can get the buffs and get the surges on it, it's, it's a pretty solid card, actually. Uh, I think it has potential. I'm going to give it a 2. Uh, and Arena's card is probably unplayable. Uh, 1 mana, 1 1. So Life doesn't actually affect the board on turn 1, so I, I'm, I'm going to say this card is unplayable on Arena. Uh, I'm going to give it a 1. I give it a 1 and a half. Like, like they're, again, 1 is like completely unplayable on Arena. It's like. Like, I can't, like, Dead Man's Hand is a 1. Like, <laughs> the, those cards that don't, actually don't do anything. This is actually, this is a dude on board, so that's not completely terrible. Alright, I like this card a lot. Hilled near Frost Rider. It's a 3 mana 4-4 four, four with the Battle Cry Freeze other minions. Okay. So, 3 mana 4-4s. Four, so the problem with this card is, obviously, the easiest to see application is in the Free Shaman deck. This is the best, like, activator for freezing your own means you get those free synergies. I think, if you're playing Free Shaman, I think you play this card. Um, but I still don't think the deck is going to be good at all, so I don't think this sees play in that deck. Um, the other application is you play in a deck with like no 1 or 2 drops, really, if, that you then you place this 3 mana 4 4. If you're playing a deck without like on curve cards on 1, 2, or 3, then you don't really need a 3 mana 4 4. Like, it's good, but it doesn't actually help your game plan, really. It's kind of, I guess, helps fight for board, but it's, it's no, it doesn't synergize with your deck. So I don't think this really sees play in that either. Um, this card is powerful and has potential, actually. Just, I think it's over and potentially a synergy with a deck that maybe could exist in Free Shaman. But I think that deck will be really bad. So this doesn't see play, I don't think. Um, give it a one and a half. Because again, Free Shaman maybe could be a thing. Maybe. Uh, an Arena card seems okay. The thing is, in Arena, like, um, uh, the downside is potentially really big, though. Like, if you if you draw this past turn three, like, you're probably going to have, like, a kind of established board. 
And sure, you can get those trades and stuff and go face with it before you play this card, but like still, skipping an entire turn of attacks with your minion is, for the most part, pretty bad. Uh, I, it's definitely not... I don't know if this card is like good or bad. I'm going to say it's okay. Because it could be good and it could be bad. 3 and a 4 corner is really powerful, obviously, but... Yeah, it, it has potential. I'm going to give it a 2.5. It seems like okay to me. There's a lot of situations it's really good and a lot where it's really bad, so... Yeah. Uh, has some middle ground. Alright, Night Howler. 4 mana, 3, 4. Whenever this minion takes damage, gain plus 2 attack. Um, yeah, I don't know why you would ever play this card in Instructed. Like, if you want the Enrage effect, you play, I would, I would, if you're playing Warrior, you play Frothing, obviously. This is much worse than Frothing, very clearly. Um, or, like, I think this card is worse than Guru Bashi Berserker in Constructed. It just has less high, like, less, like, high roll potential. Um, this card just doesn't have the power level for Constructed. Even in, like, a Tempo Warrior deck where you're, like, well, when the punch is not good enough. Right, like, you damage it, and it's a 4-mana 5-4 now. Like, oh boy, that's also a vanilla stat line. <laughs> so, I'm gonna say this card's unplayable Constructed. Uh, in Arena, it's just fine. Um, 4-mana 3-4s don't contest the board enough where this might too often just die on board and not get any benefit from the attack. But there are worse 4-drops, right? Like, this is pretty comparable to Aberrant Berserker, I guess, because it takes one damage and turns into a... It's, it's turns into a 4 on a 5-3, not even a 5-4. Yeah, ooh, this card's even worse than I thought it was. Uh, yeah, this card's not, not good in Arena. It's mediocre. I'll, I'll give it a 1.5. I don't think you really want this card. I'll give it a 2. It's just a 4-drop. Sometimes you need 4-drops. Um, there are worse ones. There's also a lot of better ones, though. Alright, Tusker Fisherman. 2 mana, 2, 3. Battle Creature, friendly minion, spell damage, plus 1. Okay. Um. Okay, so my first instinct is Cold Sorcerer sees play. But I don't. I think this is worse than Cold Sorcerer because you have a minion on board to activate the spell damage. So this is probably not as good as Cold Sorcerer. Which doesn't even see play anymore. It's not playing Tempo Mage like last year. So. Um. Yeah, this. Yeah, you would rather just have a spell damage minion instead of this guy. Like, you'd rather play Kobold Geomancer. You'd rather play, like, the this guy. Like, you, I don't think you want the effect. That's a battle creature to another minion. Um, this is unplayable constructed. Uh, in Arena, it's a 2 mana 2 3 with mostly irrelevant text. It's fine. Like, you want 2 drops for the most, like, 2 drops are the most important cards in the deck on turn two, so you want some of them. This is an okay one. Uh Vry Ghoul. Three mana three one. Death Herald, if it's your opponent's turn, summon a two two ghoul. Okay, well this card's really bad. Uh if you want this effect, you should just play Agnapper. And it's unconditionally get two one ones, which is probably better than a two two in the kind of deck that wants this effect. So this card is a one. This sees no play. Uh in Arena. Agnapper is pretty good in Arena, but like Conditional Egg Napper is not very good, probably. And, like, 3 1 is the kind of stat line where you want to be using your 3 1 to trade in, like, 3 3s and 4 3s on your turn. Like, they don't want to be trading in your 3 1. <laughs> like, um, I don't know. This is just a bad card. It's, it's only good to 1 and a half. There, there are worse ones, again, but, like, it's not good at all. Alright. Here we go. A Karis Veteran. 1 mana, 2 1. Valkyrie of a friendly minion, plus 1 attack. So this is kind of like Abusive Sergeant Light. It's um, pre-nerf Abusive Sergeant, except instead of getting plus two attack this turn, it's plus one attack permanently. I'm on the fence about this card. My instinct tells me it's actually not, it's like pretty good, just because it's vanilla stats plus another attack, which synergizes so well with like Zootix. And maybe like aggro hunter decks, or maybe like shaman decks. But... It's just such, like, a meh card. <laughs> like, it has synergies, but it's not flashy at all. It doesn't really do a whole lot, especially if it's another minion on board. It's just one mana, two, one, right? And it, what made Abusive so powerful was, like, it wasn't very often, unless you're playing, like, Face Hunter, where you just play Abusive on a dude and go face with it. You're playing Abusive to make trades. And really, if... Though, like, the permanent attack buff isn't really relevant for using to make trades like you are with Abusive. Um, so... I think my 
I think it's I think this card is worse than abuse, even post nerf abusive. Like the and the only deck that plays post nerf abusive is Zoo. I think this is kind of in a similar vein. I don't think this sees play over abusive surging. I could be completely wrong. This card's actually really good. I actually wouldn't be surprised if it was. Um, but my instinct tells me that this card is worse than abusive surging, and Zoo will continue to play abusive surging and not this card. Maybe in conjunction with this card, but I don't think so. Uh, it definitely has potential just as a one drop that affects a, the board immediately if you have another one drop on board. Um, I would say this card has potential. I don't think it's people are saying it's like really good. I think it's okay. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up being really good though. Uh, in arena, this is a pretty good one drop. Uh, you can just play it on one. It's a one mana two one. It's okay, but uh, if you can get the buff on it on like turn two on another one drop, it's pretty solid. Uh, in the right deck, that plays like a lot of one drops, a lot of two drops. This is a pretty good card. Uh, I'm giving it a two and a half. It, it, outside of that deck, it's probably not something you want in your deck. So yeah, it's, it's okay. Venomancer, five mana two five poisonous. Uh, this card is pretty clearly unplayable. Um, in arena. It's probably okay. Yeah, five minute two five dies to a lot of things, especially on turn five. But you could say it trades into other five drops, no matter like what their like health is, because it has the poisonous. Um, I think the best case scenario is like taunt this up somehow with like Argus or something, and you get like a three six poisonous that has taunt, and they have to trade a bunch of stuff into it. But um, I don't know. I think it just dies to too much, right? Like. If they trade it evenly into it with a 5-drop, like, it's alright, but you're not really getting value out of it. Like, 5-drop should trade evenly into 5-drops. So, yeah, I'm going to say this is not great in arena, but a 1.5. Alright, Skelemancer. Alright, 5 mana 2-2. Two, two. Death Rattle, if it's your opponent's turn, summon an 8-8 eight, eight Skelt. Okay. This card has an insane top end, but it is also... Is a five mana two two. So, if you can't activate the effect, it's a f it's a five mana two two. You just paid five mana for a two two, right? Like, it's the kind of card where like both players can kind of play chicken with it. Like neither wants to kill it, so it kind of just sits on board as a two two for a long time. And at that point, like it's really not good. Like you're playing a five mana two two, and it takes like four turns to pop. Then a five mana two two with a four turn delayed eight eight is probably not even good enough. Um, the best case scenario with this is you play it. And with like Argus or Sun Tree Protector and you taunt it and obviously then they have to kill it eventually. And you get the idea out of it. Um I think that's too niche for to see playing like zoo decks and also again the low end in a zoo deck, like you do not want five mana two two sitting in your hand if you don't have any like synergy activators for them. Um This is the kind of card where I don't think it sees any play in any existing decks. But it's such like a raw has so much raw power, kinda like Bone Mare. But Bone Mare is a lot better than this card because it does see play in existing decks. But this card, it's such a funky card. I, I don't know, that's not a good word for it, but like, it's an effect we've never seen before. And it's such a huge, it has such high potential that it could end up sneaking in somewhere, but it doesn't see any play in any existing decks for sure. Um, I'm going to give this a 2, just I think it has a lot of potential, but ultimately probably not great. Uh, in Arena. It's probably also like a 2 in Arena, just because, again, getting an 8-8 is really good, but if it's on your opponent's turn, if they only activate in your opponent's turn, you probably not going to have synergy with it to make them kill it on their turn, so they're just not going to kill it. <laughs> like, um, I think, yeah, maybe you could say this is like, uh, kind of like board clear insurance, something like Nerubian Egg. Like, Nerubian Egg's not even that bad in Arena if you don't have activators for it, just because it protects your, you play it on turn two, and then, like, for the rest of their game, until they play a board clear, like, your board, even if they clear, you still have a full four left over. So, you could maybe say this card's okay in a similar sense. I'll give it, like, a two in arena as well. Alright, Grave Shambler, four mana, four, four, whenever your weapon is destroyed, game plus one, plus one. It is an elemental. Okay, so, this is a decent on-curve elemental, and, which doesn't make me want to rule it off, like, but the only actually okay elemental deck right now is Elemental Shaman, I think. Um, and the only weapon you play in the deck is Jade Claws, so it has maybe potential synergy, but I, I don't think you ever play this over Fire Plume Phoenix, which is, I think, just an overall more solid card. Uh, yeah, I don't think, I don't see the same plan obstructed at all. That's kind of interesting, but, like, I don't know. It's a 4-mana 4-4 four four that's sometimes a 4-mana 5-5. Five five. Like, it's not really an effect that any deck wants right now. Uh, in Arena, it seems good, like... 
outside of weapon classes, it's a 4 mana 4-4, four, four, which you can get a lot worse than. And, like, that alone is probably, like, a 2 out of 5, but in a weapon class, you can play this on turn 4, and if you're popping your weapon, that turn just adds a level 5 value, which is significantly better than a 4-4, four, four, unless you're playing against Priest. So, I would say this is pretty good in Arena. Maybe not pretty, it's decent in Arena. I'll give it a 2.5. Alright, Tainted Zealot. 2 mana 1 with Divine Shield and Spell Damage. Alright, hear me out here, because I think this card is actually good. <laughs> yeah, it looks bad, but um, I think this has a very particular application, and it's good in a very particular deck, and that's Shaman decks. Shaman decks are like that play Blood Mage, and if, um, like, you know, if you go back to Midrange Shaman from about a year ago, when I had Screener Spirit Claws, uh, but before Pirates, it was like the Midrange Shaman deck that would, that was like half the meta, right? That deck, like, occasionally played Cobalt Geomancer because it was just so based on getting that spell damage synergy to activate Spirit Claws and activate all the War Clears. I think this card is significantly better than Cobalt Geomancer, actually. Just because, especially in Shaman, where you can utilize Divine Shield with, like, Flame Tongue Totem and that stuff, and it's just much more sticky on board. It's harder to remove. You need to, like, use two effects to remove it with the Divine Shield, as opposed to the Cobalt Geomancer, which could die to anything, really. Um, I think this card's actually... If that kind of deck, like some kind of hybrid control midrange shaman that plays Maelstrom Portals and plays Lightning Storms, I think this card maybe sees play in that deck. Like, I wouldn't rule it out. I I'm not saying this card is good. I, I said this card would be good like five minutes ago, but I'm not saying it's... I think it's playable. It's it's at least available for consideration, and I appreciate that a lot of these neutral commons are at least available for consideration. Like, none of them are really pack filler. Um... I guess, uh, this one's a joke, though, so it's not really pack filler. Uh, yeah, all these are, like, I mean, this one's maybe pack filler, this one kind of is. This one kind of is. But, like, that's less than there usually is, right? <laughs> like, um, I can see this, again, I can see this scene play maybe in that kind of shaman deck that uses flame tongue totem, but it also wants the value from more clears and stuff. Um, I think it's, I'm gonna give it a 2, because I think it's potentially playable in that deck. Uh, in Arena, it's probably not great. Spell damage is just not, like, an effect you can take advantage of as much as you would like to. You give it a one and a half. Alright, Spell Weaver. Six mana, four, four, spell damage plus two. Why would you ever play this over Evolve Cobalt? What's a one? <laughs> uh, in Arena, it's also a one. You, you don't want this in your deck. Alright, Wretched Tiller. Alright, well, let's address the elephant in the room here and say this card looks exactly like McCree, which I'm sure is, like... I'm sure I'm not the only person who noticed that. But like, come on, guys. McCree. Look at that. That's, that's him. It's like, whoa. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, one mana, one, one. This many attacks. Whenever this many attacks, deal two damage to the enemy hero. Okay. I can't rule this card out just because it's such an aggressive one drop. But, like, I think this is probably worse than a one mana, one three. Or one mana, three, one, sorry. I don't think a one man three one would see play anywhere just because like it has the potential to just get pinged off or you know, daggered or hero powered or traded into by any one drop. Um the reason Lapar Gnome was good is because you could play it as a two one. And even if it immediately died, which it did fairly often because it's a one mana two one, it still dealt dealt two damage to them. And this doesn't have that guarantee. I, just, I don't think this sees any play. Um in arena? Probably also pretty bad. Like, face damage doesn't really matter in Arena a whole lot, unless you're playing, like, a hyper-aggressive deck that you, like, luckily drafted. Um, in that deck, it's maybe okay. But, uh, other outside of that, like, it's, you, know, you don't want a 1-mana one 1-1 one 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 in your deck. That doesn't really affect the board. And it's a 1.5. Alright. Wicked Skeleton. 4-mana 1-1. One one. Valkyrie gain plus 1-plus one, plus 1 for each minion that died this turn. Okay. I think this effect is too variable for Constructed. You could say... Again, decks, like token decks, they want to be trading a lot, but you need to kill... Four minions have to have died this turn for this card to be good, or even playable. So, and how often that... So there have to be, like, two trades. I don't think that comes up enough where, like... Of course, they're, like, insane swing turns where, like, six or seven minions died, and you get, like, a four minute eight eight or whatever, but... Far too often, this just sits in your hand and does nothing, and I don't. That that reason, I don't think it sees any play constructed. It's just too variable. It's too much low end, right? Like, yeah, I'm gonna give this a one construct. I don't think it sees any play. All right, 
Arena. Arena, like, the problem that with this card constructed is even if you're playing a deck that can take advantage of the effect, it, there's a chance your opponent just, like, isn't playing a minion-based deck and it doesn't get any value because they're not trading minions. But in Arena, everybody's playing a minion-based deck. So you're going to be trading minions. It's something that's guaranteed to be happening over the course of the game. Especially on, like, Paladin or something. Uh, yeah, I think Paladin is probably... This card is probably okay, or maybe even better than okay in Paladin. Uh, and Shaman, I guess. Um, it's because you're going to have dudes on board to trade, and they're, they're tradable dudes. Um, but, yeah, I think this card is okay in Arena in a couple classes. Outside of the classes, it's probably pretty bad. Again, it just sits in your hand does nothing too often. And you can't play it on curve as much as you'd like to for a 4-drop. Give us a 2 in Arena. It's okay. Alright, we got Grim Necromancer. We're the last bomb. Four mana two four. Battlecry summon two one one skeletons. Okay, so this is like what is what's it called? Dragon Lane mechanic. Um, but it's two one ones instead of a two one. It's I guess better than Dragon Lane mechanic. I guess maybe the application of this the potential construct application of the card is evolve. But this just isn't good enough for Evolve Shaman or Token of Shaman. It just doesn't have enough effect. Right? Like it's just Four mana, four six spread over three bodies, which sounds actually good on paper, but I think in practice there's just not enough effect to see play it. Uh, it's better than Mechanical Dragon Wing, but Mechanical Dragon Wing has never been played anything, so uh, yeah, I'm going to say the card doesn't see play. Not quite enough power. And an arena this card seems solid. Uh, Mechanical Dragon Wing's in an arena, but I think it's a little bit better just because it gives you the two separate like avenues of trading with each one one. Uh, two one ones is undoubtedly better than two one, so. And the two four body like decent, uh, in the like early to mid game. Two four like trade two drops. Um, yeah, yeah, this card's decent. I'm gonna give it a two and a half. It doesn't do anything flashy, but uh, it, it it does it, it puts minions on board. What more can you ask for? All right, going to the rares here. First rare, three mana three one shallow grave digger death rattle at a random death rattle minion in your hand. Okay, I think this card's probably unplayable uh, just because three mana three one is such abysmal stats. And there are a lot of really bad death rolls that you just don't want in your deck. Like, if you compare this card to, like, Museum Curator, this card is worse in every way. <laughs> um, yeah, this card's just not good at all. Uh, you can maybe, like, you, the only potential application is, like, a Nizoth deck and a class that doesn't have, like, class-specific death rattle minions. But and you want to, like, just cheese out, like, a Tyrion or something. But, like, how the amount of times you get Tyrion is equal to the amount of times you get Ticking Abomination. Like, you could just whiff and get something you never play in the game, or is, like, not beneficial all to your game plan. And you're playing a 3-mana three 3-1 three for that, which is not, like, is a terrible stat line. So, uh, this doesn't see play. I'll give it a 1 and a half. I'm just gonna give it a 1, it doesn't see play. Um, in Arena, it's probably okay, because, again, 3-mana three 3-1 three does kind of die to everything, but any, like, early mid-game card that also has potential value late game is like not a terrible top deck. Like it's okay. I'm gonna give this a two in arena. Two and a half, I think. You could you could definitely see the same play in arena. Um taking abomination. So this is the set card meme, I guess. Haha, meme XD. Uh this card's obviously really bad. Like <laughs> you could maybe make a deck that's only like the only cards, like, the other minions that are, like, eggs and other cards with, like, beneficial death rattles that you want to activate, but, or I guess you could play this in a deck without any minions, and this is the only minion, so it's not removing your own board, but, um, yeah, this card's not good, I'm gonna give it a 1, like, like if you playing a deck without any minions, you don't want a 4 mana 5-6, like, that's good, a 4 mana 5-6 is good in, like, a tempo or mid-range deck, but it's not good in a control deck, because that's not what the deck is trying to do, like, um, in arena, the card is similarly bad because in arena you're gonna have minions on board, oh, like usually, and you don't want to be killing them. This card is bad. Uh, all right, next card, Linebreaker. Three mana two five. Your powers disabled. Okay, three mana two five is like premium stats. Like this is really good stats on three drop. Um, you don't. This card doesn't see play for that alone because it's you know stats. Just stats aren't good enough for arena. But I think in a meta game where, okay, so. You don't, you can't play this on, like, your opponent's stock hero power. Like, 3 mana 2-5 that, like, disables them doing 1 damage a turn is not good enough. 
But a three mana two five, the obvious way this gets interesting is if your opponent is a death knight and they're playing those like super grindy death knight hero powers, and this kind of stops them. Like if your opponent plays the warlock death knight, where like if you can clear the demons and then play this guy to make them not able to do their life steal ability, which is kind of their win condition, I feel like. Um, this card has potential, but. The problem is, if you get to turn 10, which is, like, where a lot of the hero powers from the Death Knights are, like, becoming relevant, this card is just, they're gonna have a lot of ways to remove a 3-mana 5-2, right? Like, a 2-5, rather. Um, they're gonna have the removal, they're gonna have dudes on board probably to trade into it. It's just, it's okay on curve, and it's okay in the late game, but it's not good anywhere, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't see this team in play. I'm going to give it a 1.5 because it has potential as a tech card, but I just don't see this team play. Uh, in Arena, I think this card's solid. It's clearly a 2-5. It's pretty good stats. Like, Carrion Grove is good in Arena. And um, Hero Power is being disabled. It's good in maybe some situations. It's probably also negative in some situations where you want to be Hero Power, especially in, like, Warlock or something. But, yeah, overall, the stats are good enough. It's good in Arena. You get a 3. Alright. Phantom Freebooter. 4 mana 3 3. Battlecry gains stats equal to your weapons. And it's a pirate. Okay. There's some outrage over this card. People don't want more pirates in the game, understandably. Uh, but this card just seems not good at all. Like, why would you ever play this over with Drake Corsair? And for the, also, like, the 4 mana spawn pirates is, like, pretty contested. You have Naga Corsair, you have Spellbreaker, and Corcoran Elite, and Mortal Strike. Those are already, like, way more 4 drops than an aggro deck with less weak land. This is at the, like the by far the worst slot for a pirate deck for a new card. Um, for this card to be good, you need to have like an un, you need to have like an unused weapon, right? Like if you have this with a fiery warlock that you used once, it's a four mana six four, which is eh, like it's okay, and it's a pirate, so it's pirate synergies, but like it's not good enough. I feel like, and if you have a, like Argonite Reaper, it's four mana eight four. That's pretty good, but like still has four health. It dies to a lot of stuff. Um, this is ultimately just like two win more in pirates. If you have a big enough weapon where this is like getting a relevant buff, you're probably just gonna win the game by going face with a weapon. And this probably isn't even gonna survive. So, yeah, this card's bad. Um, doesn't see playing pirates. Pirate warrior at least. Um, and like in decks that play pirates and maybe want more pirates in you, like rogue, like tempo rogue plays pirates, but. This card just isn't good enough. Like, if you have a dagger, it's a 4 mana 4 5 pirate, which isn't good enough. You need to have, like. It needs to. If you have, like, a 3 2 weapon, like the Shadow Blade, again, if it's used already, it's a 4 mana 6 4, which isn't good enough. It's just not good enough. <laughs> right? Like. It's an aggro card that doesn't immediately affect the board, and it doesn't have, like, good enough stats. Often enough, I guess. Uh, I mix the card 1 and a half. I don't think it's any play. Uh, in Arena, uh, in some classes this is okay, in most classes this is unplayable. Like, classes are gonna, like, okay, Warrior, Paladin, maybe, yeah, I guess probably Rogue. This card's okay. Uh, I'll give it, it's like a 2 in this class and like a 1 in other classes, so I'll give it a 1.5. It's not really a card you want a whole lot, unless you have like very obvious synergy with it. Alright, Corpse Razor. 5 mana 3 3. Battlecry, give a friendly minion, Death Rattle, and resummon this minion. So it's Ancestral Spirit on a stick, but that comes with a 3 3 body. Uh, Ancestral Spirit is a 2 mana card, so you could say it's like a 3 mana 3 3 with the effect hacked on. Um, Ancestral Spirit's like always been kind of a clunky card just because, excuse me, sorry, you can play it and it's really vulnerable to like transform effects and like balance effects and things like that. Um, and you need to be hitting like a big minion with it. And Sister Spirit's kind of good because you can play a big minion like an Earth Elemental and play this with it on the same turn for like not a whole lot of mana. But this is not as good because you need to have the big minion stick and then play this the next turn because it's a 5 drop. So ultimately I think this card's too slow, it doesn't see play. Uh, it's nice to have that effect as a neutral, I guess. Um, yeah, I just don't see it see play. There's not a whole lot of synergy with it either. Like. I guess Druid maybe wants like big taunts. They can like play a big taunt and then innervate this out to resummon the big taunt, maybe. I don't know, this doesn't seem good enough. Again, I can't give it a one just because it has those potential uses, but it's a powerful effect, resummoning the minion. You could say it's like a two mana delayed version of like your big drop, which is good, but 
Yeah, ultimately just too clunky. I don't think it's too split. Uh, and Arena as far as probably solid. Um, if you curve just like a four drop, like you play like Yeti on four, and then it sticks, and you play this onto the Yeti, it's like good. Like you get a Yeti for two mana, kind of, in a sense. I mean, it's, it's really more of a Yeti for like four mana, but you know, you, you're you're happy with it. I think the card is playable. I'm gonna give it two and a half. All right, let's get to the exciting cards here. Star Knight Chain Gang with four mana, two three taunt. Battlecry summon a copy of this minion. Okay, this card at this kind of effect is so flexible that I, I like it a lot. Um, you, I think this is good enough to maybe see playing Token Shaman, just because the failsafe, even if you don't have Evolve, is a four mana two is two two three taunts for four mana, which is something that the deck already almost plays with Feral Spirits. Like Feral Spirits is a card that's almost good enough for Token Shaman. I think this card is maybe better than Feral Spirits, just because even though it comes down a turn later, it doesn't affect your game plan. It doesn't have, like, a negative effect on your game plan. Like, Token Shaman, you want to be curving out. Um, Overloading, for the most part, is, like, really bad in Token Shaman. Like, how many Overload cards the Token Shaman deck play? I think it might actually be none, because the deck is so, like, reliant on curving. Uh, yeah, I think it plays no Overload cards, actually. So, I think, yeah, so Sarnite Knight Chain, so just in that sense, it's 4 mana for 2, 2, 3 taunts. It's pretty good. Like, you know, it's Feral Spirit sees play is 3 mana for 2, 2, 3 taunts. Play with plus overloads, like this is kind of a neutral fuel spirits in that sense. And fuel spirits is a pretty good card. Um, and then you also have the evolve synergy. You play this on turn five, and you get two five drops, which is good. Um, but it's not as good as Doppelgangster evolve, obviously, but it's good. You know, if you don't have the Doppelgangster at hand and you just need something that turn, it comes down to turn earlier for the combo. Um, this card is just good against aggro. It stops two attacks at least. From like a pirate warrior weapon and things like that. Uh, another application, hand buff paladin. You buff this while it's in hand. And the cousin turn earlier the doppelgangster. And it has taunt. More, most importantly, it has taunt really. Taunt stacks with how much bigger it gets. Like small taunts are bad, but big taunts are insane. So I think if like hand buff paladin, the card definitely makes the cut. Uh, even other hand buff decks, hand buff hunter maybe. I flew this you know, kind of like going through things in my head, but. Uh, I think this card is almost good enough for Token Shaman, and it potentially could be good enough for Token Shaman, and you definitely played in a hand buff Paladin, which, you know, calling it now Sleeper Deck of the Set, hand buff Paladin, okay? It's going to be awful. I'm completely wrong, but hand buff Paladin, my favorite deck. Go get him. This card of three. I think this card is pretty good. Uh, an Arena, four mana for two, two, three taunts. Pretty solid. Probably not a whole lot of synergy, but it's solid to get a three in Arena as well. Alright, another cool card, Happy Ghoul. 3 mana, 3 3, cost 0 if your hero was healed this turn. Okay. My favorite part about this card is that, I think obviously you played him, but if he gets played anywhere, it's a priest. My favorite part about this card, though, is there's going to be scenarios if, where if this card sees play, there's going to be like a pirate warrior that like plays pirate at patches on turn 1 and then doesn't attack with patches, so you can't play your Happy Ghoul. Or like. If you're going second against a mage, like the mage doesn't ping you, so you can't activate Happy Ghoul. Like that's that's very funny to me. Like it's funny that not attacking is going to be the correct play a good amount of the time with this sees play in priest decks. Um, will it see play in priest decks though? I can't say. My first inclination is probably, is because, again, if they hit you with a one drop or you're going second and they like hero power you, you're gonna you're gonna be able to heal it off the hero power play two mana three three which is really good um the question is how good it is it like yeah i think like other than your hero power priest didn't play that much self-heal right like it plays binding heal maybe and like maybe greater healing potion maybe um ultimately this card other than your hero power it's really hard to activate but like at most points in the game, this is a 2-mana 3-3, three, three, but it's worse than that just because it could be not a 2-mana 3-3. Three, three. But worst case scenario, is just a 3-mana 3-3, three, three, which... I guess Priest are pretty saturated with 3-drops with Curious Glimmer Root and Call Talent Priest, and maybe the new 3-3 three, three Lifesteal guy, but... It, it's not awful in its worst case scenario, and in its best case scenario, which is, like, you play this for 2-mana on turn 2, it's pretty solid. I don't know if it's like... It doesn't have enough synergy with Priest, maybe, and it just might not be good enough. Uh, the other application I heard was, like, Paladin, like, you play it with True Silver. Like, you play True Silver, heal, hit, and you play Sky for free. 
Um, it's kind of similar to like what a lot of pal decks are right now, to, like like Dread Corsair, but probably worse just because it doesn't also activate off of uh, Rallying for the Blade and also doesn't like summon patches. So it's probably worse than that than that deck. Um, and I don't think you can play the two together. You can't afford to have like cards based solely on the existence of two cards in your deck, right? Like that's way too inconsistent, especially for a mid range deck like Paladin. Um, again, it's like any mini that can cost zero mana is potentially really good, but I think, I don't, this card probably isn't as good as people saying it is, I'm going to give it two. Uh, it, it could see Flame Priest, that, that's about it. Uh, in Arena, 3 mana 3-3 three, three is fine, but you're probably also not getting the synergy, I'll give it a two and a half, I'll give it a two actually, yeah, it's, it's okay. Keening Banshee, 4 mana 5-5, five, five. whenever you play a card, remove the top three cards of your deck. So this card is Fell Reaver, but one less mana for 3-3 three, three less stats. That's really bad. Like, Fell Reaver was good because it was just huge. This card is a 4 mana 5-5. Five, five. That's, like, good, but not huge. This card's unplayable. Uh, in Arena. Um, this card's probably okay in Arena. I don't, it's not really an effect you want. Like, a 4 mana 5-5 five, five is good and contestable and well, but... You know, discarding three cards... If it's only, like... If you're, like, you're only doing, like... Oh, I'm an idiot. It's whenever you play a card. Okay. Hang on. I think about this now. I thought it was whenever you're... Okay. I thought it worked exactly like Fellow for some reason. But, um... Okay, I think the card's still unplayable and constructed. Actually... Uh... Okay. Thinking, I gotta think about this, actually, because I, I didn't read the card correctly. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's just not good enough and constructed. I feel like 4 mana 5-5 five, five is just... It's good stats, but it's coming with, like, kind of significant downside pretty important, um, yeah, that card doesn't seem playing Struct, I'll, I'll bump it up to 1.5, because it could, just as a 4 mana 5-5, five, five. but, um, it's probably not great, okay, in Arena, though, the card's probably actually really good in Arena, just because 4 mana 5-5 five, five is good stats, and in Arena, like, burning cards is much less relevant, because your card quality is lower, you have less synergies, um, I think you could definitely, and you're probably only playing one card into a turn in Arena, right, like, yeah, this card's pretty solid in Arena, give it a 3 in Arena, Okay. It's not worse Fell Reaver. I thought it, thought it was worse Fell Reaver. It's not, though. Alright, last neutral rare. Bone Drake. 6 mana, 6 5. It's a dragon. Death Rare will add a random dragon to your hand. Um, this is one of my favorite cards in the set, I think. Um, I think I mentioned it with Sindragosa. I like Nazoth decks, and I like dragon decks. And I like putting them together into terrible control decks. And this fits the bill for that. It's a 6 mana, 6 5 dragon. It actually has all your dragon stuff. It has a death rattle. It's a relevant death rattle that helps you trigger your dragon stuff even more. Um, kind of similar to the Cobalt scale bane. In decks that are in classes that don't have like really good class specific dragons, like Dragon is operative, I think you can definitely play this guy just because he has the potential to give you all those broken dragons. And you can play this guy like in place. Like so, instead of playing like Ysir or Alexstrasza or like really big dragons, you can play this guy and Metaspite Historian and just discover them or get them randomly. And you don't have to go through putting those in your deck and just having them be dead in hand too often. Um. Yeah, I think. I'm not sure if this is good enough for Dragon Priest, just because. Um. Yeah, in Dragon Priest, this probably is doesn't make the cut just because your Bookworm is good. It's on six. Operative is better than this card. Um, it potentially gives you more operatives, but so does Metis by Historian. Uh, but outside of Dragon Priest, it's kind of like grindy, like control. I think like control Dragon Paladin, control Dragon Mage, something like that. I think you definitely play this guy. He's so much value on a card. Especially if you're playing in his off deck, like this is even more value. Uh, I like this card a lot. I think it definitely has a lot of potential. Um, don't forget Wild too. You know, the Wild has Dragon decks, it has his off decks. Like Priest, I think... Reno Nizoth Dragon Priest is kind of a deck. Maybe not plays dragons, but Reno Nizoth Priest is a deck. And it, maybe you can stick some dragons in it. Uh, I don't know. That's a card solid. Give it a three. Uh, and Arena Crusade is really good too. Um, just because, for the most part, dragons are really big. No, they're not really. For the most part, dragons are pretty like impactful creatures. So if you get. Let's play a six mana, six five. And then you could follow it up with like a big dragon that you just got from the Death Rattle on this guy. It's kind of crazy. Uh, I know that's a four in arena. This is a great arena card. All right, get into these epics. Nervian Unraveler, six mana, five five. The spells cost two more. Okay. Um, so this is a tech card, obviously, for 
a meta game. I'm not sure what meta game. <laughs> um, first of all, this card puts the mage card, the three mana three two that makes your spells cost one more. This card is much better than that card. Costing two more is much more relevant than costing one more. Um, I think you maybe play this in a. So the deck side, this is really good against a Miracle Rogue, and Jade Druid, and maybe Freeze Mage and like Burn Mage. Um, if we're in a meta game where those decks are top tier, you could justify taking this one, I think. But the problem is you have to play it against like Miracle Rogue and Mage. You have to play it in a turn where it's like the turn before they they have like their setup for their big turn, like Miracle Rogue the Gadget Sand turn or Mage the turn where they're trying to kill you. So. Yeah, I don't know if this sees a whole lot of play. It's one of those cards kind of like where it probably doesn't see play, but it's always there in case those decks become too powerful, which I think is a good thing for the most part. Uh, uh, if you're if they're playing a deck that doesn't play spells, the six mana five five. This card's a lot. Th this card's definitely a lot worse than Lothic, by the way. Like, you're definitely like if you want the Lothic effect like in the wild, you're definitely playing Lothic, but not this card. Um. I think the card is just, it's just a really good tech card, but it's not going to be in a meta where the tech, de the decks it techs against are very good. Maybe with the exception of like Mage, so. Um, it's just going to be a good card against Mage. Uh, Alright, so overall, I think the Rubian and Unraveler won't end up seeing a lot of play, but it just its presence in the game will deter these kind of like decks based around cheap spells to, from becoming too common in the meta, so I think it's a good thing overall. Uh, give it a 2.5 when it's drafted. Um, in Arena, it's, it's okay. Uh, that's probably worse than okay. It's probably not great, just because 6 mana 5 5 is bad stats, and you're gonna want the chance, so it kind of deters removing it, but it also affects your spells as well, so like, I don't know, maybe you want to be removed. I think it's probably bad in Arena. Maybe it'll one thing. Alright, Corpse Taker. Excited for this card. 4 minute 3 3. Battle Cry. Gain Taunt if your deck has a Taunt minion. Repeat for Divine Shield, Life Steal, and Wind Fury. Okay. So. I think the most natural fit for this card is definitely in Paladin. Just because you're playing Tyrion. You're playing Wicker Flame, Burn Bristle, which activates the three most important ones. And you're probably also playing the 1 mana guy, the 1 1 Divine Shield Taunt. And all those activate this, at least to an extent. 4 mana for a 3 3 taunt divine shield is okay. But once you get the lifesteal, it's an insane anti aggro tool. Um, I think maybe you end up playing just like random lifesteal cards, like the charge lifesteal guy or something, just to activate this guy. Um, but, like, I feel like building your deck around this isn't a great idea. Uh, I think it, for the most part, it's be more like a curator card, where if you just happen to have those these kinds of cards in your deck, you just stick this in and it's a super value for your deck. And,. You can definitely argue, like, drawing the things in the wrong order. Like, if you draw your Wicker Flame before you draw this card, you can't play it for its, like, full potential. But if you still have all the conditions in your deck from different cards, your the chances are pretty good you're drawing this and playing this on curve. And it's, like, a really good card on curve. I think this card's really good on Paladin. Um, outside of Paladin, I think maybe Shaman could play it, because they have Alakir. That gives it Taunt, Divine Shield, and Wind Fury, but it doesn't give it Life Steal. Uh, Shaman doesn't have any life steal cards, so they have to play a neutral one. Um, yeah, I think that's maybe the only application I can think of now for it. Uh, I'm sure there are decks I'm not thinking of that just not on a single minion, but just run multiple. Like, just they have a top minion, divine shield minion, and a life steal minion in their deck. And then you, you just can maybe end up playing this guy like the curator. Like, if you already have a dragon in your deck and a beast in your deck, you might as well just play the curator because he has 7 mana of 4 6 draw too. This is pretty similar. If you just have them in your deck, you can just stick this in. It's a really valuable card. Uh, I like this card a lot. I don't know if it'll be meta defined. I think it's really good though, and it's good enough in Paladin at least. So I think it's gonna be a card you'll see a lot in the meta. Um, then Arena probably pretty bad. Uh, eh, it depends. On this is a pretty deck dependent card. I'm gonna give it a two, because if you have like Taunt Divine Shield, it's a solid card. If you have like Life Steal Taunt, it's a solid card. If you have like Wind Fury Divine Shield, it's okay. Like it's if you have at least two of them, it's a solid arena card. But uh, if you don't, which is probably usually, it's not very good. Alright. The Meat Wagon. 4 mana, 1 4 mech. Death Rattle, summon a minion from your deck with less attack than this minion. Okay. Um. I think this card, people have run this card off as a terrible. I disagree. I think this card is at least has potential. Just because it synergizes so well with. Obviously, it synergizes well with the buffs. You're playing in like a. something. 
I think the two decks that would slot best in would be Token Druid and Handbuff Paladin. Uh, in Token Druid, you're playing like these board buffs, you're playing like Mark of the Wild and all that. Uh, and if you can stick, even if you get like a 2, if you get this to like 2-5, it's decent, right? Like, you're summoning a 1, like a 1 attack minion from your deck. If you're playing a lot of those in Token Druid, you're probably playing a decent amount of them in Paladin, like you pulled the 1-1 one, one Taunt Divine Shield guy. Um, but if you can buff it more than that, it kind of gets, like, ridiculous. <laughs> um, it's weak to silence, but so are most Death Rattle cards. It's, yeah, I feel like this card is really powerful. Maybe not really powerful. It, it's a powerful card. It's a power, any effect that summons minions from your deck, they're not even summoning from your hand, so you're not getting, like, it's not even discarding cards from your hand, it's just from your deck. There's no card disadvantage for it. Um, I think it's very powerful. Like, it's just an inherently powerful effect, especially in a deck that wants minions on board a lot, like Token Druid. Um, I don't, I can't guarantee to see this play in Token Druid, but I think it has at least the potential to, and the potential to see play in, like, Buff Paladin, maybe, like, Buff Hunter, things like that. Uh, I think this card is powerful, so I'm gonna give it a two and a half. Um, in Arena, probably unplayable, just because you need to have a buff on it, because you're not gonna have zero attack minions in your deck for the most part. I'll give this a one in Arena. Okay. Tomb Lurker, 5 mana 5 3, battle cry, and a random death rattle minion that died this game to your hand. Okay. Tyrion Synergy, I guess. I think this card's just not good enough, right? Like, 5 3 is bad stats. And you get the effect on a battle cry, so it's guaranteed, but. Like, the death rattle minions that died this game. It's a random one, it's a problem. So you, the decks where this gets the most value are where you're only playing high value death rattle minions, like Tyrion, like. Um, the obsidian statue maybe uh but the problem is those ha the by the time you play those cards and they die you're already at like turn nine or ten and we're at the point where you don't really want to be playing five drops and you had to have like the guaranteed value from it the only time you would ever really want to play this card is you're kind of guaranteed to get a high value death rattle from it so um i think this has potential maybe uh, just because, you know, recycling your Tyrion or maybe even sort of Obsidian Statue is like a powerful enough effect that you might want, you know, you might want a copy of this card, but I feel like it's just too slow, too clunky. There are better things you can be doing, like just playing Zoth and resummoning it, right? Like, uh, I th ultimately, I think this card's not good enough. I'm going to give it one more now. Um, in Arena, it's pretty deck dependent. I feel like if you kind of deep into a draft and you have a good amount of death elements, it's actually pretty good just because you can play it. And any amount of like late game value is usually pretty good in arena. That like late game value that gives you like multiple bodies is pretty good in arena. So um, if you're playing a deck with a couple like good death rattles, I think you can definitely pick this card up. It's pretty good, I think. Give it three. A skulkin geist, six mana four six, battle cry, destroy all one cost spells in both hand and decks. This is the pretty clear jade idol counter card. Um, I'm not sure if I'm excited about this card. I think the biggest utility this card has actually is discarding cards from your opponent's hand. Um, that's such a powerful effect making them discard. It, it's actually like basically the only discard effect in Hearthstone. So, I don't. That, I think that's the most like inherently powerful aspect of the card. I don't even think this is that good against Jade Druid, if that makes sense, because you're probably playing this in a control deck, and control decks are just bad against Jade Druid playing all their Jades by like. They don't need infinite J idols to win the game, usually. They can just, you know, play all their J producing cards that are playing, like, 8-8s and 9-9s every turn of the game in the game. And they don't need the infinite J idols, they just need... They don't need infinite J idols. If you're playing a 6-mana 4-6, they can just play their Jade producers that aren't J idols and still roll over you. I don't think this card is... It is a carry to J Druid. I could be completely wrong about this, but... I think... I don't think it sees any play, honestly. Like... The other application is it kills the inner fire and inner fire priest. Um, so against those two decks, you can maybe see this pop in playing in like mid range decks, but I don't think it's good enough in the control decks, honestly. Like, especially if they don't already have the cards in their hand, you're not discarding from their hand, you're discarding from your deck. It's like, like six mana four six to potentially get value later in the game, and maybe not even. Um, I think the biggest hard counter this card has is to inner fire priest, just because it kills their inner fire, which is like their main combo piece, but Jade Druid can still function without going infinitely Jade Idols, like, and if it gets to a point where this card sees, like, a lot of play, they just won't use the Jade Idols to shuffle, they just use it to summon a one-mana Jade, which is pretty crazy still. 
So I don't think this card is that great. Um, I'm gonna give it a one and a half. It's it has potential. It could potentially be a good tech card and an inner fire priest against like inner fire priest and maybe jade druid. But I don't even think jade druid. Um, maybe miracle grove, but probably not. Like also worth noting, it destroys all of them in your deck too. So if you love like combo decks that you know, like you put all the one cost cards, but like that's why Hemet exists. You you can play all combo pieces above three mana and just drawing them for the rest of the game. And that's just better than this, I think. Um, and also, you can't really play this in a deck where you want to have one cost spells because it destroys your own one cost spells. So that's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, ultimately, this card is not good enough, I think. Um, in Arena, it's probably pretty bad. A 6 mana, 4 6 is bad stats. And, like, I don't. How, uh, what mana spells aren't that common in Arena? Like, I, I can't even. Like, Lightning Bolt, I guess, is okay in Arena. There aren't a whole lot of one mana spells that are really good in arena. Uh, so yeah, I don't think this is a one of four. This is good and not good in arena. So one and a half. Okay, Rattling Rascal. Four mana, two, two. Battle cry, summon a five, five skeleton. Death rattle, summon a five, five skeleton for your opponent. Okay. This card is pretty janky. I actually like it a lot. I think it's... There's so many synergies that you can have with this card. I think... Um... The most obvious one is you play it in Donate Warlock, so you play this, you get the 5-5, five five, and then you play, what's it called, it's not called Donate, it's a, what's the magic card, it's, um, Treachery, you play Treachery on it, and, so you play Treachery on it, so you get the 5-5, five five, you play Treachery on it, and you kill like another 5-5, five five. that's pretty funny, that deck's not going to be good though, it's going to be a joke deck, um, I think more practically, this card is not that bad in, like, Evolve Shaman. It has insane, it has great Evolve synergy, just because for assuming the 5-5 five, five Skeleton is 5 mana cost, you're getting a 5-drop and a 6-drop for 5 mana, and also denying your opponent the 5-5 five, five Skeleton, that's pretty good. Like, I don't, even, it might even be better if you just played in, like, a single target Evolve Shaman with, like, Master of Evolution and the Shaman Death Knight, because then you can evolve only the Rattling Rascal, and you're turning a 2-2 with a horribly negative Death Rattle into, you know, into a positive with a brand new 5-drop. Um, also, like, Silence Priest, you silence off the Death Rattle, it's really good. You know, it's 4 mana for a 2-2 and a 5-5, which is solid. It's a good stat. 7-7 seven, 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 seven are stats. Um, probably not good enough for Silence Priest, but just, like, a potential application. Um, if you don't have any synergy, this card is obviously not good enough. Like, you don't want them to be getting 5-5s. Five fives. That's not good. But, uh, if you can prevent the other, if you can prevent your opponent from getting a 5-5, five five, that's, like, it's a solid card. Um, that definitely does have potential. It might just be too weird and janky and, like, doesn't have enough synergy with, like, existing decks to work. But it's, like, not quite powerful to, like, have its own deck built around it either. I'm gonna give this a 2.5. I think it definitely has potential. Um, in Arena, you're not gonna have synergy with this in Arena. So, I'm gonna say... Yeah, it's it's okay, right? Like, eh, it's not really. I mean, once it dies, it gives them a five five. I mean, you can say that you trade your five five and your five five, and trading evenly, but like then you're trading evenly with your own card. That's like not good. Uh, yeah, I think this is bad. Man, I give it a one and a half. Right. Drakari Enchanter, three mana one five. You're gonna turn effects trigger twice. Okay. Um, this is much better in wild than standard. I feel like. In standard, there aren't really any, like, end-of-turn effects I really want to be copying with. Um, but in in Wild, you have Emperor and you have Rag, and those are, like, really important. I guess the one in standard you might want to be copying is the Lich King, but... Like, yeah, it's hard to combo this the Lich King because it uh, adds up to 11 mana, so you have to have either this or the Lich King stick on board to get value from it, which is, like, far from guaranteed. I think the biggest application for this is some... Okay, this enables some, like, insane combo decks that are super slow and super greedy because it is kind of like a way to get two guaranteed emperor ticks in wild um and we'll see what comes from that i'm kind of excited to just try some super dumb stuff uh but overall okay i guess i think that alone even if it's not in any competitive I, this is way too slow to be played in any competitive wild decks just because like even it costs two turns of setup it costs nine mana to get your ember set up turn instead of six and you can't do anything else during that turn. So sometimes you could like play Emperor plus removal, but you can't do that with this. Um, this card isn't competitive. I think it's a really cool card. It's kind of like it's the kind of card that like could end up being busted in the future if some like kind of some payoff cards get printed for it. Uh, I think this card is 
It's it's just doesn't have all oh, looking at the stats it has terrible stats too. Um yeah, this card's a probably it's not good enough for standard for sure. Uh combo with wild and combo with, with Amber and Wild. I'm gonna give this a two because there's some potential for insane combos there. I can't okay. Um in Arena's card's terrible, it's Omgom Rager for the most part. I'm gonna give this a one. One minute. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a one. You don't want Omgom Rager. Okay, Furnace Fire Colossus. It's a kind of six six. Battlecry, discard all weapons from your hand and gain their stats. Okay, so this card's kind of hard to evaluate just because, for the most part, the effect seems like not that bad. Like in theory, if you have like, weapons in hand that you already have a weapon equipped and you don't want to be playing multiple weapons, just discarding the extra ones are probably not going to get to play. It's a pretty strong effect and like adding up the stats, but. At the same time, like, discarding cards is basically always bad, right? Like, discarding cards to make this minion bigger just makes it more open to hard removal and two for one yourself. Um, I don't think this card ends up seeing play just because if you, like, play this and discard a fiery war axe, it turns into a 9, 7, 9, 8. The 6 mana 9 is pretty powerful, but if they can just use hard removal and kill it, then you two for one yourself. Um, ultimately, I mean, you know, not, actually, now that I think about it, like, some decks, this could be, like, fringe playable in Pirate Warrior, honestly. No, no, n never mind. Oh, it's dumb. Don't, don't ignore that I said that. Pirate Warrior needs their weapons to attack with to deal damage, and this does not guarantee damage. Um, yeah, weapons overall, like, aggro decks, they come in with charge and multiple charges, or, like, guaranteed, they're just, just guaranteed damage. That's why you play them. Um, and this is taking away guaranteed damage for potentially more damage, but also potentially less damage if it gets removed so i think it's just too risky probably not gonna see any play i'm gonna give it a one um in arena six minus six six is fine stats maybe get some synergy probably not uh it's six minus six six give it a two i give it a two and a half six minus six is actually a little decent all right last last deck death x punisher four minus three three give a random life steal minion in your hand plus two plus two this card is really weird. <laughs> it's like two expansions down the line, they're printing very specific hand buff mechanics. It's, it's funky. I don't really understand this card or why it was printed. Um, I guess we should look at all the lifesteal minions and like see how much application there is. Um, hang on. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just Google it. Yeah, Google is your friend. Yeah. Alright. Okay, so we got Accolade of Agony. You don't want to be buffing like Priest Court. None of these are like really that good to buff, I feel like. Um, Obsidian Statue, maybe, but like, ultimately, this is a 4 mana 3 3 for the most part that doesn't really. It has the potential to do nothing if you don't have a Lifesteal minion in hand. And even if you do, like, Buffs stack really well with lifesteal, but it's really just a 4 mana 5 5 best case scenario to spread across two bodies. Uh, I don't think this card sees any play. There's just, it's too too niche. Like, you need to be having, you need to have lifesteal means deck consistently to play it. And, you know, draw both of these cards for it to be good. It's not good. I'm going to one. In Arena, probably not going to have many lifes. If you have, like, a lot of lifesteal means your deck, you know, power to you. But, uh, you maybe you can play this card, but you probably won't. Um,. Given this a 1.5. Okay, before getting the neutral legendaries, I didn't realize this, but for some reason, Bloodworm was not in the chart we were using. And I wanted to talk about this card because I think it actually is not that bad. Um, yeah, let's, let's stick this in with the commons here. Uh, Alright. Worm. Okay, so Bloodworm is the 5 mana 4 4 Beast with Lifesteal. And this card is not flashy at all. Um, in fact, it's it's a vanilla minion with one keyword, and it has bad stats. So you would think it's just like pack filler. But I think this card actually potentially could just be good enough because heal, neutral heal is at such a premium right now in Hellstam. There's no heal bot, there's no Reno. And ha having this as a beast means you can tutor it with Curator. So I feel like you could just slot this into like existing, maybe not if not like control decks, but like mid range decks that already have dragons and like the locks. 
And you could just play this as like a health gain tool. It, it stacks really well in like Hunter, where the five drop slot on Hunter is pretty contested with Stranglethorn Tiger, Stampede and Code, Hunter Rhino. But like, if you're playing a slower version of Hunter, you can play this. It has Beast Synergy, and also you can tutor with Curator. Um, I can see this card actually seeing play, just like as a dude that gains health, right? Like, this is probably better than Cult Apothecary. And Cult Apothecary saw some play on Will of Tits, just because heal is so valuable right now. Um, I, 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 my, my, maybe not a bold prediction. I think some other people are saying this. I think this sees at least a little bit of play. It's, it's solid enough, and Lifesteal is a powerful enough mechanic where this could see some play in classes that, where they just don't have any heal, and maybe they can take advantage of the Beast Synergy. So I want to give this a two and a half. I think it has potential. Uh, and Arena is also like a solid card. Um, Lifesteal isn't as important in Arena because you know, there aren't like as many aggro decks, like just all in aggro decks going around, but it's, it's a powerful tool. So again, especially if you can get these synergies or buffs with it. Um, I think it's a decent Arena card. I'm going to give it a two and a half. Yeah. Maybe a two and a half. It's, it's, I, I'm not unhappy picking this card. Okay. Now, finally, we are into the last cards, the neutral legendaries. Uh, here are all the Death Knight cards, we'll be talking about those. Um, so we've got the Princes. First Prince is a 2 mana 2 2, Prince Kalisa. Battle Cry, if your deck has, has no 2 cost cards, give all minions in your deck plus 1 plus 1. Okay, people are really down on the Princes, they were not happy with them, and like how they were designed. I can kind of see that, none of them are really super powerful, but again, I think it's really more of a curator-like effect, where if you just happen to have few or no cards in that mana slot, you can just swap these princes in, it'll probably do something helpful for your deck, right? Like, I think the most obvious application for Kaliseth is in Quest Hunter, where you're probably not playing any 2-drops just because your deck is so saturated with 1-drops, and like on turn 2 you want to be playing 2 1-drops and not a 2-drop. So instead you can play this guy and he buffs all the 1-drops in your deck, and that's pretty solid. Like, <laughs> again, like you're not building... Even though these cards look like builder rank cards, you're not building your deck around these cards. You're just putting them in if they happen to fit in your deck. Uh, I think Kalaseth is okay. I, th uh, I think there could be some form of Z-Lock that cuts like Direwolf Alphas and Knife Jugglers for this card. And it just buffs your 1-drops and like maybe your 3-drops and stuff. Uh, which probably is not very good. Probably not worth it just because you don't, you're not guaranteed to draw the Prince, so... Uh, the best application of the card is Quest Hunter, which is a non-existent deck right now, but it could help it, potentially. Uh, the card's bad. It has potential, though. I mean, giving all the minions your deck plus one plus one isn't that great, especially since it's not like the Mist Caller, where it also gives the minions your hand plus one plus one. Uh, if you change, like, a couple words in this card, it's really good. If you change it to, like, for all the princes, I wish they were, instead of no two-cost cards, they were, like, no two-cost minions. I think that'd really be helpful. Then, like, you could still play the really important spells in your deck, like Wild Grip and things like that. Um, the card's just not good enough, I think, in most decks. Uh, right, like, decks that are really minion-based and care about getting the buff on all these minions are gonna need two drops. Like you say, like, maybe Hand Buff Paladin, but the two-mana 1-1 one, one that buffs your entire hand is, like, a core card in that, in that deck, and you cannot cut that card. So, like, you can't play it in that, which is, like, what would have the best synergy with it. Which is unfortunate. Um, you know, not good enough. I'm gonna give it a one and a half. It has a small amount of potential just because it's a powerful effect, but it's not as powerful as it should be to like be really playable. Um, in arena, you need two drops. This is a this is like a trap card arena for sure. You need two drops 100. percent Like, of course, you're if you get this like first pick, of course I'm gonna take it and not draft any two drops. But that's like if you actually want to win games, it's not like a good strategy at all. <laughs> this is not a good card to pick in arena. Um. The next prince is Prince Taldoram, 3 mana 3-3. Three, three. If your deck contains no 3 cost cards, transform into a 3-3 three, three copy of a minion. I think this is the weakest prince overall. Um, there's some cool combo potentials with it, maybe. But you have to jump through so many hoops, and 3 cost cards is like where a lot of like defensive cards play, like come into play, like Fear Rage, Shield Block, and you know, like our draw cards like Arcane Intellect or Coldblade Oracle, or like Mimic Pod. Which cards that like you have to have active to get to your combo pieces to make it do like play a combo deck. And if you don't have those draw cards, then like that's a problem. That's very problematic. Um, it, it makes it so much slower to get to your combo pieces. I don't think this is any play in any combo decks. It's just too limiting on your deck's design, especially if one of your combo pieces is three mana. Then obviously you're not playing this. Um, some people have said like you play it in Aviana Coon Druid with like Malagos copy Malagos because you don't really play any three drops other than Fuel Rage maybe. Um, 
I don't think so. Like, why wouldn't you just play Faceless Manipulator? It's much more consistent because you don't have to not play three drops. Uh, it's probably bad overall. I don't. I don't even see it anyways. I'm probably missing some really obvious combo with it, but I just don't think this is good at all. Like, <laughs> if you're playing like Hunter, I guess maybe. But Hunter is so reliant on his three drops that you can't copy like relevant death rattles. I don't think there are really any decks that don't play three drops at this point. Well, I don't. Yeah, this just doesn't see play really. Um. Yeah, it's just not good. I'm rating this a one. <laughs> uh, in arena, it's really hard to evaluate these in arena. I would not ever want this in my deck because uh, okay, the thing is, Telesteth is a two mana two two, which isn't a bad fail safe. Three mana three two is a little bit better than two mana two two, I think. So like, just add the three mana three two to this card's okay. If you have like the choice between you know like Nat Pagel and Warwalk or chilling this guy, you take this guy. He's a fine vanilla minion. Oh, he's fine. I need to give that a two. I want to give Telesteth a one and a half too, actually. Um, for the most, yeah, it's just a vanilla dude. I think it's all right. You don't want to build around this, though. Obviously, <laughs> if you try to build around it, your deck is going to be terrible because you're missing an entire section of your curve, which is not good. So, uh, do not draft this guy in arena to get synergy from him. Draft him as a vanilla minion. Okay. Less splints. Prince Valinar. 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. If your deck has no 4 cost cards, gain life steal and taunt. Um, I'm tentatively thinking this is probably the only prince that has the potential to see play in this current meta that we're in right now, just because it's much more likely for a deck to not have 4 drops than it is to not have 2 or 3 drops because it comes later on the curve and it's not like as necessary a component of the curve. And a 4 mana 4-4 four, four taunt life steal is really good against aggro. Um, I th yeah, the the main like application people have been saying is you played a Miracle Rogue, because the only 4-drop it plays right now is Sherizen. And 4-mana 4-4 four, four Lifesteal Taunt is probably better than Sherizen, just because Miracle Rogue is already really good against control decks, and has a pretty inherent weakness to aggro decks, but this kind of makes up for that. And Sherizen's a really anti-control card, while well, this is an anti-aggro card, so I think you probably played in that deck. Um, Outside of that, like, I don't know, I don't think there's really anything that doesn't have 4-drops, but, like, if any deck comes around that just doesn't play 4-drops, I think you just put this card in, because it's good enough against aggro. It, it depends on the meta, I guess. If it's an aggressive meta, then you just play this if you don't have 4-drops in your deck. I think it's the only one you can really just put in. You don't need synergy with your deck for it to be good. It's just good on its own if you have no 4-cost cards. Um, it's definitely worse than Corpse Taker, I think. If you have synergy, if you have, like already Corpse Taker synergy in your deck with things like Wicker Flame or Tyrion, then you definitely play that over this guy, but if you don't have any 4-drops in your deck, you might as well just play this card. Like, it's, it's a very solid on-curve card against aggro, so I, I think this card's decent. I'm gonna give it a 2.5. It's definitely not like Super Flash or anything, but it's okay. Um, in Arena, it's 4-mana, four 4-4. Four, four. It's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's mediocre. You're probably... The chances you get this off are very low. I mean, you can say you maybe like you draw it really late in the game, and then you get a four mana four for a life steal taunt. But at that point in the game, it's not really relevant. So, yeah, not great in arena. Um, let's uh, okay. Last two cards. I'm gonna start with Arfist because I want to have the Lich King last. I think he's, you know, the kind of the core, one of the biggest and most important cards in the set. So start with Arfist. Four mana two two. It's a beast. Death rattle. Add a random Death Knight card to your hand. Okay. Here are all the Death Knight cards. They're just really dumb broken spells and a dumb broken weapon. Um, four mana two two is really bad stats, but the effect of adding a Death Rattle or the Death Knight cards to your hand in the early game is actually really strong. Like most of these cards are better in the early game than in the late game. If you do something like play Army of the Dead on curve, that's insane. Like that's super powerful. Like Death and Decay is a lot better against like small and medium sized minions. Um, this is better in the late game, I guess, but uh. Things like Obliterate is really good in the late game. This card is solid in the late game. Maybe this card is later better in the late. Uh, sorry, this card is good in the early game. This card is good in the early game. This card is maybe better in the late game. Uh, Frostborn's like good always. Um, but the potential, like the Lich King cards, are undercosted to the point where if you play them on curve, they're just so much better than what your opponent puts in their deck that it's an insanely powerful play. And the one you're really looking for is to play Army of the Dawn curve. It can just make a board out of absolutely nowhere, which is super powerful. Um, yeah, I don't know if this card is quite good enough, just because the stats on it are so bad, but it's the kind of effect where, like, 
in a curator deck it's a beast so you can tutor for it and in his off deck it comes back and gets you extra death value with the death knight cards i think it just has a lot of utility it's not super flashy but it's a lot of utility i think it'll end up same place somewhere for sure um i would be surprised to see this card sees absolutely no play and it has it's a dog baby it got the best entrance animation in the game okay um i think this card sees place somewhere I, I can't definitively say where maybe some kind of hunter deck like slow hunter deck maybe some kind of like paladin deck when it's off um, yeah, it, it's just a solid card, right? Like, it's bad on, it's, has bad stats, but once you trade it off, it just has the potential to almost win the game, because these cards are so powerful. Um, yeah, I think this card's solid. I'm gonna give it a three. It's, like, kind of, if you want just to have a four drop in your deck, or just, like, a dude in, like, a control deck, I feel like this is kind of just, like, powerful enough where you just default to this guy, right? Like, if you just, I don't know what to put in my deck. I just need, like, a 30th card. Let's just put an Arthas. Like, why not? It's just it's just universally good, I think. Uh, in Arena, it's maybe just as good. Maybe a little bit better, because the Death Knight cards are even better. They, they're even better than the average Arena card quality. So, I'm going to say it's, like, a 3.5 in Arena. It's bad on card, but, like, it doesn't really matter if you're getting an insane combat card from it. Like, a lot of the cards are good removal. This is good removal, good removal, good AoE. Good, like, insane AoE. Like, um... Yeah, Arfus is solid. I like him a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people are, like, maybe it's the bad stats, but, like, it's a powerful enough effect where I don't really care about the stats. The Death Knight cards are really powerful overall. Well, like, some of them are not great. Like, the Anti Magic Shell is pretty bad. The Death Coil is not great. But, like, Death Grip is probably the worst one, actually. But, like, other than that, I would say Obliterate. Death Coil is pretty good, actually. Obliterate, Death Coil, Frostborn, Doom Pact, Army of the Dead, Death and Decay are all really solid. The only ones you kind of want to be dodging are this one and this one. So, yeah, the Death Knight cards are just powerful enough. I think this sees play somewhere. Alright, and speaking of the Death Knight cards, we got the Lich King. Last card I'm going to be reviewing is an 8 mana 8 8. With Taunt, at the end of your turn, add a random Death Knight card to your hand. Okay. This card is super powerful. Just in terms of raw power, it's maybe like almost unparalleled in the game. A mana 88 taunt is like pretty good stats. If you look at like Iron Bark Protector, obviously doesn't see play, but it's a really good arena card just because it's a big dumb dude that immediately protects your face and you the rest of your board. The fact that it has taunt is actually huge because cards like this that are super slow and like kind of accrue value over time, like Ysera, just have are always are good in control matches, but just not good in aggro matchups usually, just because they come down so late and don't immediately affect the board. Um, this card is miles better than Ysera, I think. It has a better stat distribution. It has taunt. It comes down a turn earlier, and I think the Death Knight cards are better on average than Dream cards. Like the Dream cards, you can just get like zero mana bounce, which is like eh. You can get Nightmare, which is bad usually. You can get Laughing Sister. You, there are more whiffs on the Dream cards than there are on the Death Knight cards, I think. Um, and, yeah, I just, I don't see a rule where this doesn't see place somewhere. I'm not gonna say, I look at this as, like, auto-include and control decks, I don't know if it's that good, but it's so much value if you can't kill it, and even if you can kill it, you're getting the guaranteed one Death Knight card from it, which is maybe good enough, like, I think it makes Arthas good enough, so one Death Knight card is, like, pretty solid. Um, and it's an 8-mana 8 8 taunt, and no, if nothing else, it's just a big taunt, dude. I think in having taunt, it makes it good enough to definitely see playing Taunt Warrior, I think you maybe play this in, like, slower Brutalists that can innervate this out early and, like, get more resources, which is awesome. Um, I think you maybe play this in, like, Paladin decks, like, Patrol Paladin, something like that. I think you probably play this in Warlock. I, I think this just slots into ex any control deck really well, I think. Uh, it might be too slow for mid-range decks. It's not, like, a great... It's not like Dr. Boom. You can't just, like, put it into a deck, right? Like... You can't put it into a mid-range deck or even, like, a zoo deck and expect it to work. But, like, in the decks this is good in, this is insane. I would say this is a solid 4. I think I'm not sure if it's going to be meta-defining card, but it's so much value over the course of the game. Yeah, I don't see where it doesn't see play. It has to see play somewhere. The, the Death Knight cards are just insane. It has to see play somewhere. Um, yeah. And in Arena, the cards are obviously crazy. I'm just giving it a 5. Like, it's insane in Arena. It's very clearly really good. All right, and that's that's all the cards. Let's let's go through, get a little break down here. Um, top rated constructed cards. We got uh, Ultimate Infestation, the Druid card that gets five damage of five five, draw five cards, gain five armor. And then no Hunter cards, no Mage cards. 
uh, for Paladin, Righteous Protector, the 1-1 one, one Divine Shield Taunt, and Uther, I think are really solid. Uh, and Priest, Spirit Lash is really good. And Rogue, I think Shadow Blade is really good. Uh, and Shaman, I think the Death Knight is really good. And Warlock, Defile is really good. The Death Knight's okay. The Despicable Dribble is pretty good. Uh, and in Warrior, Blood Razor is ridiculous. Fire Warrior is really good. I think Valkyrie Soul Flamer is really good. I think the Death Knight is really good. And in terms of neutral cards, Bone Mare, I think, is good enough to see playing a lot of the decks. I think Corpse Taker is really good. Yeah, I think Corpse Taker is really good. And I think the Lich King is insane. I'm about to look at four and a half. I, I, he's powerful enough, but this could be like a crazy card. Um, in terms of arena cards, there's a lot of crazy ones. Ultimate Infestation is really good. Fate Spinner is good. Uh, Exploded Bloat Bat. I'd be a little high, actually. Yeah, I don't know about this. this is, let's give it a three and a half. Uh, Cinder Gosa. Yeah, just like big fight nerds get a lot of value. Obviously, really good. Four and a half. Ether Uther. Uh, Obsidian Statue. Um, Plague Scientist. Uh, Plague Scientist is really good, by the way. If you want to quickly talk about like Arena Commons, the three best classes since like the beginning of time in Arena have been Mage, Paladin, and Rogue. Paladin got like three pretty good Arena Commons. All of these are like decent in Arena. Or Right Protector is good. Dark Conviction is, I think, is good. It's like really flexible. It should bring the cards up, huh? Um, so, for Mage, the three commons Mage got, Kulgraith is really good, Frostland is really bad, and Breath of Ghost is like, eh, like I'm okay playing it, but it's not great. Uh, for Paladin, all of these are pretty solid. Rush Protect is really good, Dark Conviction is really good, and Shield Blade Champion is okay. And then for Rogue, Plague Scientist is insane. Leeching Poison is awful, and Bone Baron is pretty good, so... I think Arena is going to stay pretty similar to the way it is now, with the three top classes, you know, stick remaining the same since that they have always been. Uh, kind of, I don't know. Uh, Those are like crazy Arena commons. I think Shadow Sun's really good. Accolade of Agony is pretty solid. Spirit Lash is really good. Priest has like good commons. Uh, yeah, um, that's about it for Arena, I think. Uh, yeah, well, I kind of want to talk about like what meta decks. I think will be good, and also like what some of like the community ratings are over and underrated. All right, so just some closing thoughts here. Uh, I think in terms of decks we've played, I think Token Shaman and Token Druid will still be really good. I think Control Mage will still be solid. There were a lot of good armor gain, like life gain tools that were released with the Death Knights and stuff. Um, but I think Token. I think for the most part, the four really good decks that already exist that will continue to be good are Token Druid, Token Shaman. Control Mage and like Control or Midrange Paladin, some kind of form of that. Like Aggro Paladin probably still be good too. Um, Dragon Priest will be fine. No, no class is losing anything means that I don't think anything really get pushed out of the meta all the way. Um, I don't think Rogue got really any great cards. I think Shadow Blade is really good, but other than that, Rogue didn't get any great cards. So Rogue is probably not going to remain not great, just because it didn't really get any good Miracle cards. Shadow Blade might probably still have something actually because it's so good at board control, but. Uh, in terms of Shaman, like, the Shaman Freeze deck is not going to be a thing. This card, like, the Burlock is okay, the Ice Fishing is okay, Burlock Shaman, but it's probably not good enough. Um, Stuff for your Giant, which is, like, it gets one less for each oh, time you overload. Probably not good enough, just because you're not overloading that much in, you know, modern Shaman. Um, the Shaman Death Knight probably just slots into Token Shaman really well, maybe, like, like Midrange Shaman, because the effect is powerful enough for like, the Battlecry effect is powerful enough, where it turns, like, a bad board into, like, a pretty solid board, so... Um, in terms of Warlock, Defile makes Control Warlock a possibility, I think. Whether it's good with Defile, Despicable Dreadlord, and Bloodraiser of Cooldown, there's really only three good cards Warlock got, I think. Maybe Drain Soul and Sanguine Revel are pretty good, too, but... If, like, if this doesn't work, then they're just gonna push Control Warlock even more in the next expansion, probably. So, I think we'll definitely see Warlock make a comeback. If not this expansion, definitely next expansion. Um, for Warrior... I think Tempo, so on top of already boosting Pirate Warrior and like Taunt Warrior, like Control Warrior, I think Tempo Warrior is going to be really good. Uh, Blood Razor is just a crazy card. Fiery Warrior is really good in like a Tempo Warrior deck, so is Valkyrie Soul Flamer. Um, this card has potential, probably to kind of win more, but it has potential. Um, Rock Phase is really slow and bad, I think, but uh, Scourge Lord Garrosh is really good in Tempo Warrior again, and probably like Control Warrior because the weapon is just insane. Um, Board of Souls is a really good card too. I think you play it in, like, Control Warrior, just because it's kind of a guaranteed draw of your best cards in the deck, which are Fiery Warlocks and Blood Razor, I think. So, um, yeah, Warrior got a lot of great tools this expansion. Um, 
So did Paladin. I think Warrior and Paladin are the two classes that got the best cards. Uh, yeah. Priest got some okay cards. I don't think it's really gonna. Spirit Lash will definitely help existing priest decks. Um, Shadow Essence and like Eternal Servitude and Obsidian Statute makes like the greed priest that tries to like summon as many Obsidian Statues as possible. That's probably gonna be really slow and not very good, but it's a cool concept for a deck. Uh, I think the Priest Death Knight's okay. I don't think it's really crazy. Like, people have rated the Priest Death Knight really highly. Yeah, the 8th best card in the set. I don't think it's that good at all. Um, the Borg Clear is just super situational, and you have to have, like, cheap cards to go with the Void Form to really get a lot of value from it. And Priest is, like, doesn't really excel at having cheap cards. Like, in a kind of, kind of control deck, you only be playing big cards every turn. So I don't think he's that great. Um, yeah, Paladin's gonna be good. Mage didn't get that many. I don't think Mage got any, like, super great cards. Ghastly Conjure's pretty good. Other than that, I think, like, the only really playable mage card that got this match was Ghastly Conjure and maybe Cold Wraith and, like, that aggro freeze mage deck. Um, probably a good thing. Mage is always really good. Uh, mage will still be good with, like, burn control mage, definitely. The, the deck is just so powerful. It has such a great game plan of just curve out and burn to win. It has so much good draw and board clear mechanics that you're definitely still playing the deck, right? Like, it's not a bad deck at all. Uh, Hunter is still going to be not very good, I think. Yeah, for the most part, there weren't any great mid-range cards that got released this expansion for Hunter. A lot of it's, like, Control Hunter stuff, and I hope Control Hunter becomes playable because it's an awesome deck. Like, Sis Tracker is a control card, Corpsewood is a control card, Blowpad is a control card, um, the Death Knight is a control card. <laughs> like, if any Hunter cards end up seeing play this expansion, it's probably going to be the secret, actually, just because it's two mana for a potentially really valuable minion against control decks. It kills taunts and stuff. Um... I don't think the Death Rattle Synergy is going to be great. Like, play that bad. This card's probably not very good. Um, but, you know, you can hope. I, I hope Hunter gets some control. Like, gets some love with the control deck expansion. Like, it's always a fun deck to control Hunter. And, uh, Druid. Druid will still have Token Druid for sure. Jade Druid will still probably be pretty good, despite people trying to play the 4 6 that kills all one cost spells. That's not very good. Um, people will still play Jade Druid. Ramp Druid is still good. Of all the Druid cards expansion, so Druid got three really good cards expansion. The Spreading Plague, the Ultimate Infestation. I think the Death Knight's really solid too. Um, uh, the Spreading Plague is just so good against aggro decks and like token decks. I, I, it has to see play more slower Druid decks. Ultimate Infestation is like a game winning spell. And Malfurion is like, it's he's not flashy, but in a class where you can innervate things out early, like playing off your on turn 5 and getting the board presence and just having a really strong hero power for the rest of the game is super solid. And him not having any synergies is not good for like synergistic decks, but in just a deck like Ramtree where you just want solid effects, you can just slot this into any like non aggro druid deck because he's guaranteed. Like the hero power isn't situational like the Warriors, where it's super, it's like super synergistic, but it's also situational if you don't have the synergy pieces on board. The Druid Hero Power is just already really good, no matter what you're doing. So I think uh, Druid is going to be fine. Overall, like you know, I, I think if any class is bad, this expansion will probably be Hunter. But um, I, I think looking good for this expansion. Uh, looking at the you know top rated cards this expansion by the community, Lich King might be a little overrated, but ultimately he's just such a crazy card. He's so much value in the late game. You, you gotta believe he's going to be good. I think Obsidian Statue is a little overrated. He's like a big dumb card, but overall just like super slow. I don't think Priest is going to have like a really great control deck. I mean, I might be completely wrong. You play this, it comes after Zoth. It's super hard to come back from, right? But time is just too slow, I feel like. Um, yeah, I think Blood Racer should be higher, if anything. Maybe like as the single best card in the expansion. I think if I had to pick out two best cards in the expansion, it would be Uther and Blood Racer. Um, underrated cards, I think. Um, Meat Wagon. I think Meat Wagon is definitely underrated. I think Bloodworm is underrated. Um, yeah, where's the meat wagon? I know it's not very high. Yeah, it's 116th out of 135. I think meat wagon is definitely better than that. Uh, let's see, I think Valinar is underrated. I think you could definitely end up seeing playing decks. Um, so for underrated cards, it's about it, really. I mean, let's see, well, yeah, I don't think I rated anything super high that other people didn't rate very high. Like, yeah, people, I think, correctly rated Druid this form pretty high. It's a solid card, I think. Um, you know, like... Ghastly Conjurer, maybe, is, like, kind of underrated. P 
flashy. It's not a super flashy effect, but it's one that a lot of mage decks want. It's just an additional cheap spell generator. Yeah, it's not very hard to read. Um, yeah, uh, Dark Conviction, maybe. I think it's a solid card, just because it's super flexible. Yeah, I rated that too as well. Um, yeah. Not a whole lot of people are sleeping on. Uh, Shadow Blade, maybe. I, I, people, uh, Shadow Blade's a pretty clearly good card, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I did a whole lot out of the ordinary with my card review. I might have, like, severely overrated Meat Wagon, but that's about it, I think. Um, saying one Revelers is a solid card. I don't know if, there's no Zoo Deck right now is the problem, but. I think saying if if the zoo deck comes into play, maybe like and zoo decks on wall, you definitely play it. It's just a good activator for your desperate little CMGs. It's just a dude on its it's a good dude on its own. Forge of Souls might be underrated. I think Forge of Souls I might have underrated it actually. I might change that rating just because it's so powerful tutoring the best cards. I wish it's like a four. The more I thought the more I thought about Forge of Souls, the more crazy it seemed. Just because you're tutoring for the best cards in your deck, really. I mean, the best cards in the Warrior decks are Fiery Warrants and Blood Razor, I feel like. I can't definitely say that because I haven't played with Blood Razor, but I just can't, I don't see a world where it isn't insane. Um, yeah, I think you'd play Forge of Souls in any non Pirate Warrior deck. Maybe like one of Integral Warrior, like two of them Control Warrior and Taunt Warrior, I think. Yeah, this is just a solid card, and two mana draw two is always good. Like, even if you're not drawing like the best cards from your deck, like you are with Forge of Souls, a two mana draw two is just good. Yeah, Valkyrie Soul Flame might be kind of underrated. I think I'm. People might be kind of sleeping on it. Okay, maybe not sleeping on it. But yeah, people did not read Valkyrie Soul Flame that highly. Um, I think the Tempo Warrior deck is one who. It was one that existed in the past and was good, but it kind of fell out of the meta and people had like forgotten about it. But I think it's going to be really solid. Oh, this is so much synergy. And just Forge of Soul. Or it's, uh, Blood Razor is just so good. Uh, you still have like Ravaging Bull and stuff, which is an insane card as well. A bone mare is gonna be really good for sure. Maybe not for sure, but a bone mare is definitely gonna be a playable card. And the Serenic Chain Gun, we talked about that one. Where are you? Yeah, so the Serenic Chain Gun, I think it's solid as well. It's just a super flexible card. Like the flexible cards always end up seeing play in the meta. Um, that's about it, I think. Yeah. Okay, people rated it fairly highly. Um, yeah, that's that's, uh, that's about it, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate it if you made it this far through five hours of one person talking about a children's card game. Uh, as you can see, the expansion comes out really soon, so uh, I'm going to get ready for that. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one.